Well, welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. Today is gonna be a walk and talk. And we're gonna talk about how the world is in the toilet, but you don't have to be. Guys, thanks for stopping in here at the Piney Woods. Hit that like and subscribe if you hadn't. And if you have, as always, guys, we do appreciate you. See, so I'm down here walking around our in-ground garden. We have a large one because we do not only providing for ourselves, but we started the farm market last year in July. And it was a blessing to a lot of folks, blessing to us. And it just helps some of our local community enjoy some fresh produce and poultry that we grow right here on the homestead. But I'll give you a little sneak peek. There's a few things missing from around this garden that we had last year. Some trees that I took down this year. Just some stuff that was encroaching on the garden. I'm gonna let some more sunlight in here in the early morning. I just thought I'd give you a little sneak peek as I'm going around. Y'all, the reason I brought you down here to this garden spot is because what folks, most folks, do not realize even still yet with things going on the way they are, with the cost of food, the inflation at the grocery stores, they still hadn't clicked, not everybody, that they'd better be growing some food. Y'all, I'm talking about food because I remember just a few short years ago, and I hope that you guys do too, just how bare those grocery store shelves were. When I was a kid, the first job that I had for the public was working inside of a grocery store. And I don't remember in the five years that I spent all through high school doing that, I don't remember ever being out of product. I don't remember ever having empty shelves of any kind because we didn't. And I don't remember extreme prices on things either, y'all. And when I say extreme, think about beef right now. Go into your supermarket, especially if they're not running a sale on anything, and see how much a pack of ribeyes is costing by the pound. I'd be surprised if you can find it for less than $10 a pound if it isn't on sale, if it isn't on sale. So we really harp on growing your own food because we do that. And it's not just y'all because of the inflation. We've been growing the majority y'all of all of our own food, meat and vegetables included now for going on six or seven plus years there is rarely anything that we buy that we do not produce once in a while we like a steak so we will get that once in a while we like some seafood we're not growing flounder and shrimp out here so we do get that from time to time but all of our vegetables y'all all of our chicken all of our pork all of our red meat comes from right here and y'all it's not just the fact that there is some security in growing your own food. It's also, y'all, that we know that everything that we produce out here does not have any junk in it of any kind. Nothing has been injected into that meat that we're eating. Nothing has been synthesized into the vegetables that we're producing. Everything is grown as organically as we possibly can with plain practices, y'all. So, there is nothing that Lisa and I produce out here going into our bodies that should hurt us unless they eat too many collard greens one night and too many jalapenos. That might hurt me the next day, but nothing is going to cause our bodies any harm from everything that we produce. I'll give you another little preview of something that you're gonna see here in the next couple of days. On the upper side of our large in-ground garden, we were having an issue a couple of years ago with downpouring floods jumping out of the side ditch that I cleaned out really good last year and running right smack dab middle through our in-ground garden stripping our topsoil all of that soil that we've been building for years through cover cropping just stripping it out because back behind us there's about a 20 acre field and the ditch line around it has grown in over the years so it's dumping onto our property so I came down in here and cut me a nice ditch with the excavator just yesterday and so now when we get those flash floods down here in this bottom that water is no longer going to jump right through the center of our garden and start eroding things away and i've y'all i've talked about the erosion that the world will put on you in other videos 
But it's really important, y'all, that we recognize that the way that the world is going, circling the drain in that commode as you're flushing the toilet, that's what they are trying to do to you. They don't want you to be self-sufficient. And when I say they, I'm talking about the big powers that be. They do not want you to be self-sufficient. They want you to be dependent on them. Just like these baby pigs are dependent on the teat of the mama for the first eight weeks of their life. They want you and me dependent on them for everything that we need. Because if they can make you dependent, you are a weak individual. I want to show y'all this daikon radish that's growing out here in this cover crop. That's one of the things that usually goes into the cover crop mix that we do in our gardens because that daikon radish will grow down into the soil, break up the clay hard pan. But this is the first year in at least seven, if not eight years of cover cropping that we've had daikons this big out here. I'm going to see if I can pull it up without it breaking. Normally I till these things under, that's part of the cover cropping, but it, it goes way down into the ground. Yep, way down. I pulled some of it out, if you can see right there. But that right there, and sometimes we'll give them to the pigs because it's a good treat, but that's going to help build this soil. But you notice the root that it has taken into this ground right here. Such a deep root that I couldn't even pull it out. And that's the way that a lot of people are in this world. They've got their root so deep inside of worldly things that you couldn't pluck them out of it if you wanted to. People have got to get back to the firm foundation that is in Christ Jesus and put their roots into the Word of God. Because if your roots are in the world of God, you are not going to have to worry about a flood coming away and stripping you out. You're going to have that firm foundation. You're not going to be deceived by the things that are going on in this world, the wars, the rumors of wars that are going on, all these crazy weather events we're seeing that they're blaming on the change, not the change of life. Somebody can laugh out of that one, I'm sure. You'll not be deceived, guys, if you have your focus in the Word of God. You will not be uprooted like that daikon radish that it has tried to yank out of the ground. Come here, girls. Rosie, come here. Dixie, come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. There's your daikon. So what are some other ways that this world is just circling the drain of that commode as it's being flushed? Well, these pigs, they, they probably know that they're pigs. And y'all, I'm, I'm being facetious. But they're not out here telling me they are something other than they are not. God created them, male and female, pig and piggy. There's a whole lot of that mess going around in the world. Y'all has for a long time. It's just been highlighted and shoved down our throats for the past several years, more than ever. I don't buy into it. I'll never buy into it. And I hope that you never buy into it either. There's a lot of people going to hell with good intentions because they think we need to be extremely tolerant of the things that are going on in the world. I do agree with some tolerance, y'all. Compassion, understanding. But when it comes to living totally outside of God's design for our lives, telling children that it's okay to say they're something other than what they are, telling grown adults that it's okay to encourage that, Y'all, you might as well be digging your own shallow grave because that's where people are heading that are leading kids like that. The Bible tells us that if we lead children astray, basically, and y'all, I paraphrase a lot. I'm not a preacher. I am just one of you guys that reads the Word, loves the Lord, and tries my best to follow what He teaches in there. But it tells us be better off for somebody to be, um, well, how is it it puts? 
basically a millstone gonna get tied around your neck and thrown into the ocean <laughs> that's not good stuff and these folks that are leading these kids astray telling them that it's okay to think they're something other than what they are and encouraging that encouraging that false foundation it'd be better if they were thrown out to sea with a millstone around their neck than what's coming for them so what is coming for them death hell and destruction that's what's coming for them if you read the bible you will see that there is no none of this malarkey that all you got to do is love everybody and all paths end up in heaven that is bull malarkey the word tells us there's only one way to the father and that's through the son so unless a person has put their faith in christ it's not going to be good y'all whether they have been the ones leading people astray or whether they have just never made that choice on their own so our hope is that folks will be pointed to christ through everything that we do <clears throat> because that's the only hope for our lives and the only hope for yours guys short walk and talk today because i gotta go do some other things but i always pray lord give me something to talk about and today it was matthew talk about the world and how it's circling circling the drain of the commode the toilet and make sure that we remember to live outside of the world even though we're in it let's not be part of it Guys, y'all have a good day, a great week, and Lord willing, and the creek don't rise too high, we will see you on the next one.